Hi, hello everybody. Welcome back to a brand new video. I understand that it's been two weeks since the last video, but that's because I was on a semi family vacation. My girlfriend was staying over for a visit and I wanted to spend some time with her before I went back to making any videos. So that explains why I haven't really posted anything in a while. So what better topic to discuss after being away for two weeks than Nintendo? More specifically, the relatively new announcement of the Nintendo Switch OLED model. The brand new Nintendo Switch OLED model seems to be a massive talking point amongst Nintendo fans. For the past four years, ever since the release of the Switch in March of 2017, there have been a massive amount of talk regarding a brand new version of the Switch. And over that time, we had gotten talks about them releasing a version of the Switch that either improves the performance or improves the battery or perhaps even improves the resolution. And so, on a fateful Tuesday on July 6, 2021, Nintendo had finally announced on their YouTube and on their Twitter that they are releasing a brand new version of the Nintendo Switch simply titled Nintendo Switch OLED model. This model looks to improve the handheld experience of the Switch, upgrading the screen size from 6.2 to 7 inch screen, going from LED to OLED, improving the audio on the front speakers, giving us a much better kickstand, which is something I am really happy about. And not only that, but they also slightly improved the docked console experience by adding a LAN port directly into the dock itself, something that the original Switch didn't have, as well as a lot of other Nintendo systems. Originally back then, you had to get a separate USB to LAN converter if you wanted to play through the Ethernet. Well, now you don't have to do that anymore. You could just plug your Ethernet port right into the back of the dock. All of this just with a $50 price increase, and it will all be available in this ridiculously slick black and white model, with a release date set for October 8th, 2021. And although I personally didn't really have a problem with it, there was a lot of people that were really upset about this, especially considering the fact that the hardware is basically the same as the current Switch. They didn't really add anything to improve it. A lot of people seem to be really upset about Nintendo as to why they made this decision, and in my honest opinion, I don't really think it was a bad move on their part. And I, I want to make this clear, I am very critical of Nintendo in the past. I am not a big fan of how they handle people's fan games or how they handle the copyright system, how they've been handling customers as well as the whole Joy-Con drift thing. I honestly have a lot of things to criticize Nintendo for. But in my honest opinion, and I'm going to be going into detail as to why I have this opinion, I don't think the Switch OLED model is that bad. And so for today's video, I wanted to go both into the good and the bad of the Switch OLED model. I want to make sure it is very even for everybody that is on this subject. Let's kind of start things off with the bad first, because that's what a majority of people have been focusing on, what people have been discussing related to this model, and I honestly feel like it would be best to just get it out of the way. Now, as I just mentioned before, the hardware of the Switch OLED model is literally just the same as the current Switch. Well, specifically, it's 2019 revision when they released the Switch Lite and included that new chip that also helped improve the battery life. I could see why a lot of people find this pointless. It's literally just the the same switch now with an OLED screen. However, the good part of that is the fact that, well, it is an OLED screen. Believe it or not, there are quite a lot of people out there that would rather have things that use an OLED screen because of its better resolution and better color accuracy. We have OLED phones, OLED laptops, OLED televisions, so why not an OLED handheld console? And not only that, but because of the bigger screen size, this is also going to help improve a lot of other people's experiences when it comes to playing on handheld. Another thing a lot of people have had problems with when it came to the Switch OLED model was its target demographic. Like, what is this console targeting? If Nintendo is trying to target those that already own the Switch, then this is kind of a useless upgrade, especially if they're already playing their console mostly in docked mode. Well, as it turns out, their main focus is those that don't even have a Switch yet. That's why they released the Switch Lite in 2019, because it would bring a much bigger demographic for people that just like to play their games on handheld. So now that they don't have to deal with the dock and they could just play the thing in handheld, that would be perfect for them. And I think that's the same thing that's going on here. They're wanting to improve the handheld experience. 
But if that's the case, why would they include the dock? Why couldn't they have one that doesn't have it and one that does? Honestly, I don't really know. Maybe they could have done this with the Switch Lite. Honestly, I don't really know, but apparently that seems to be the reason. Nintendo even went through some interviews telling people that if they already own a Switch, then they shouldn't really upgrade to the OLED model. So that basically proves the point that this new OLED model was designed for those that don't even have a Switch yet. Well, hey, at least it's a bit more logical. And speaking of that, another complaint people had when it came to this new Switch OLED model was the Joy-Cons. As you could see from the trailers, they added a brand new color Joy-Con, this just being all white. And a lot of people were wondering if they had fixed the Joy-Con drift, and predictably, they haven't. Well, at least as far as we could tell, the Joy-Cons still use the same mechanics as the current Joy-Cons, as well as those on the Switch Lite. So it will be prone to Joy-Con drift. Fortunately, there are a plethora of ways to have that Joy-Con drift fixed, including getting them sent and fixed to Nintendo themselves. Uh, that's what I did. However, it still disappoints me that it's still technically the same uh, mechanics as the current Joy-Cons. So it looks like we're still gonna have to deal with that drift uh, in the future. And speaking of hardware, a lot of people were wondering about the dock and whether or not it would be sold separately because the dock, in my honest opinion, looks really sleek and I would really like to have it on my shelf. Well, fortunately, Nintendo is making the dock a separate item that you could buy. Uh, it won't be completely separate because it will come with the Switch OLED model. However, it will be sold separately, kind of like what the Switch does now, because you can actually buy the Switch dock separately as well. In fact, I think in Japan, they sell the regular Switch without the dock. I don't know if that's still a thing, but I know it was for a while. And now one thing about the dock that people are a bit half and half over is the new LAN port that is directly on the back of the dock. Originally, like I said before, if you wanted to play uh, through LAN or through the ethernet on the current Switch, you would need to buy a $30 adapter that converts USB to ethernet. Now, this is something that Nintendo has been doing for a while. Well, now it looks like that's finally over and Nintendo is now finally adding an ethernet port on the back of the Switch dock. The only caveat is that it does remove that extra USB port in the back, but I never really used it. I could see why others want to use it because they'll add up to four players, you know, the Joy-Con grip and then three wired controllers. So I, I could see why people do have a problem with that. I never really used it, so I'm not gonna have a problem, but I know others might have a problem with it. Another thing that they also improved when it came to the original Switch was the built-in memory. Now, this is something that isn't really a big selling point for me, ne neither my girlfriend, because we both use 256 gigabyte micro SD cards uh, for Switch, so this isn't really much of a selling point for me. Um, however, for those that don't have an SD card, they should be happy to know that this new Switch is going to have a 64 gigabyte internal storage rather than the 32 of the original. Like I said before, not really a big selling point for me, but I'm really happy that they did that anyway. And finally, the last point I want to bring up is the price itself. A lot of people have a problem about it being $50 more, considering the fact that all you're getting is just a better screen, better audio, a kickstand, which really shouldn't be a selling point. I can see why some people have a problem with that. And the dock itself also being a selling point. All of that for a $50 price increase. A lot of people seem uh, think that seems to be unfair and it should have been increased to just $10 or $20 more. However, I think the main reason why it costs so much is because of the power and the still quite youngness of OLED screens. Although OLED's been on the market for the past five years, it's still relatively new, especially compared to LED screens. And so because of that, OLED stuff tends to be more expensive than LED stuff, even if they have the same level of specs, like for example, if it's like a 4K screen or 1080p screen and speaking of that I can honestly understand why they didn't want to do 4k on the switch because that might drain the battery quite a lot the, the switch is already bad enough with the battery itself especially on the original 2017 model I know they fixed it a bit in the 2019 version of it uh, but still the original didn't have that best of a battery life so yeah I can honestly understand why they didn't do 4k or 1080p handheld for the switch OLED um, and I can honestly understand why the price increase is there. Uh, although I feel like it is quite a bit, you know, $50 more, but still, it's pretty understandable. But 
I want to hear what you think. What are your thoughts on the Switch OLED model? Are you going to be upgrading to it? Are you going to be sticking with your original Switch model? Tell me all of that in the comments below. And if you have any other suggestions as to what I should discuss next, then be sure to submit them via Twitter, Discord, and in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy this video, hit the like button, and if you're new, the subscribe button, and the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I upload a video. But anyway, with all that said, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video. Bye! Before there were shoes.